Thank you. My name is Rebecca. And I recognize some of your faces, but I don't, I don't know everyone who's in the room. Um, I'm Rebecca Gesso, and I'm honored to be the executive director of this amazing Blue Lotus Temple. And I'm so glad that everyone was able to come this evening. I am going to talk tonight <clears throat> for a little while. I have lots of notes. And hopefully you guys will be up for having some interactive discussion as well. I don't like to sit and talk the whole time. I like for people to participate as well. So Bonte asked me to give this talk very soon after the new year. So I've been pondering for quite a while about what I wanted to speak about. I've been coming to this temple for nearly 12 years. And during that time, I've grown and developed my life philosophies into a really strong Buddhist practice that I work to lean into for all the many parts of my life. In general, what you see is what you get, whether I'm at work, in personal relationships, and everywhere that my life takes me. I've experienced a significant amount of personal tragedy and loss over the past few years that has really shaped where I am today. My husband of 19 years, Mark, passed away in September of 2022 after an eight-year battle with primary progressive multiple sclerosis. Some of you in this room knew Mark well. Some knew him a little bit. Um, and my only daughter moved into the dorms at the University of Wisconsin at Eau Claire to begin her college journey this past September. So that's about five hours away. So now I find myself living alone for the first time in what feels like forever. And I feel like I'm today on the other side of that loss. I've been on a healing journey for a long time now, and I've properly grieved, and I've worked on myself, and I've done all the right things that I can to reconnect with my joy, to connect with my people, and to be there to support myself and my daughter. And I feel like I'm in the exact place that I'm supposed to be in. And as much as I love my life, and I feel generally really content, I now have this space. And I could call it an empty space that was once full of rewarding things like being a wife and a mom. I could call it a waiting space that is sort of ready to be filled up in time with whatever life has in store for me next. And I don't know what that space is going to look like in the next year, let alone in 10 years. But I'm entirely faithful that it will once again be filled up with good things as I continue to move forward in my life. So being in this mindset, I just couldn't decide on a topic that seemed to really connect with where my head and my heart were at. And ultimately, I was inspired by a series of conversations I had with a good friend who was contemplating what their life's purpose was maybe even agonizing over to how to find a new purpose during a time of great change in their own life. And so that got me thinking about purpose. What is my life purpose? Do I have a life purpose? And I think many of us really get stuck on this idea of having a greater purpose in life. And it likely takes on a slightly different angle based on your age. Young people are figuring out what they're good at or what might make them feel rewarded as an adult. And as we get a little older, we might start thinking about getting married or starting a family and whether it's the right time. Later on, we might consider a career change or ponder whether or not we feel satisfied with the direction of our life, our income level, our social standing, or sometimes when life gives us a huge shakeup and situations beyond our control rip us out of the routine of normalcy that we're so attached to, we feel like we have to start over. And when we start over, we start questioning everything about what we should be doing with our lives. So the more I think about having a purpose, the more I see that it's a really complicated topic. Are we talking about a greater calling, something bigger and more powerful than ourselves? Are we talking about achieving goals that we set for ourselves with career or family? Or are we just talking about how we're going to spend our time? Learning what things are worth our energies on a daily or weekly basis. Is our life purpose how we care for ourselves or what we have to give to others? Or maybe it's all of those things in different amounts. So let's talk about this for a little bit. So does anyone want to share with the group what they feel about having a life purpose or their own life purpose? 
Anyone want to start? Thank you for sharing, Ryan. Yeah, I think, I think life purpose is difficult because, as I said, it's very complicated and it's very multifaceted. And for many of us, we're at that place where it's, how do I even start or how do I even begin? Anyone else want to share? Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Do you guys feel like you've thought about this a little bit? Or are you one of those people who's like, nope, I never consider my life purpose? Some nods. People feel like they think about it a little bit. I think it has to do with some tournaments, the effect, or changes over time. Mm-hmm. Still working on it? <laughs> I think we're all still working on it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you guys all for sharing. So I've come to the conclusion that I don't believe in a life purpose. I'm pretty positive that I don't believe in a life purpose at all, at least not for me on some simple things, right? Like humans have a really basic and simple purpose, maybe like procreating to continue the species or our purpose is to find love or to find happiness. I find that when I think about it, it just gets so tied up with all of our cultural expectations and our conditioned behaviors, and then that knot becomes so tight that we can't tell the difference between what are really things that are purposeful to us and what are things that society and others expect us to do. So we need food, we need shelter, we need clothing, and because we live in an economic-based society, we need money to get all these things. But none of that sounds at all like a real purpose. None of it includes how I feel about myself or my loved ones, how I feel when I give to others, or how I feel when I participate in society. And so it seems that a purpose needs to combine the elements of how to successfully live by our society's rules, but also how to find contentment while doing that. Because I think everyone would agree that the reason we want to have a purpose is so that we could have joy, so that we could have love and human connections. So this is why I think it's such a tough topic. To ponder your life purpose is to essentially ask yourself to know what will bring you the most rewarding joy and contentment without having any actual idea what will do that. We're not fortune tellers. We have no idea what will actually bring us joy or what is going to end up bringing us suffering. We all hear stories of people who work hard to achieve a huge goal, like becoming a doctor, making tons of money, saving up for the house of their dreams, only to find that they have no more happiness then than they did at the very beginning. So even if we're lucky enough to stumble upon the right formula for a time, it is not going to last because of impermanence. And that's a big part of it as well. Change is inevitable. So even if 
you find yourself, or sorry, you'll need to find yourself adjusting to your life purpose again and again. So how do we do that? How do we keep finding it again and reconnecting with it again without causing ourselves a whole bunch of suffering? So until recently, I've honestly never given it much thought what my purpose was. Um, I'm not a big long-term planner like some people are. I sort of meander through life, showing up to make the best decisions I can along the way. I've had the same trials and tribulations that most of us had had, maybe even more in my life than many. But sometimes I feel profoundly lonely, and I really miss having a person to walk through this life. And so for me, I know that human connection is really important to me as an individual. And sometimes I wonder how I made it through so many challenging years when life was really crazy, full of pain and fear and medical bills, and I didn't feel really connected to making choices so much as I was just, you know, getting along so that I could continue to move forward in life. Stuff just needed to be done. People needed to be taken care of. And yet, I still find myself here saying that I'm genuinely pretty content with my life, except for that empty, empty space that I'm still observing and working on a little bit. But I'm mostly a happy person. I'm pretty convinced that the reason why I'm content is because I don't have a purpose, and I never have. I don't spend any energy comparing my current life to what it was supposed to be. I don't look at my friends and family and compare what they have and that I don't have. And I'm not comparing myself to some idealized version that is unobtainable at best and misery-inducing at worst. So I think along the way with my Buddhist practice, I figured out by accident that it isn't what I'm doing or achieving that brings me happiness. It's all about how I'm doing and achieving the things I'm doing. What I'm doing is often out of my control. But how I'm doing things is consistent, and it is almost always within my control. And so this fits beautifully with my Buddhist practice. Each day, week, month, or year, no matter what I'm choosing to do or choosing to achieve, it is how I'm doing it that matters it the most to me. And so here is um, living a mindful existence seems both contradictory and yet fully embracing of the idea of having a larger purpose. And here's what I mean by that. If today I make intentional and mindful choices and then I do it again tomorrow and then I do it again the next day, my lifetime would then be filled with mindful choices. If my choices are those that align with the noble eightfold path that I've chosen to walk, having right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration, then my whole life will cumulatively have had that purpose. So what have I achieved? Who knows? But I will have achieved it in a way that honors me and those I love, and it will have been a good purposeful life. So this is not to say that you shouldn't have goals. Save up to buy a house if you want to be a homeowner. Get a college degree if you have a desire to do so. Plan to start a family if you think parenting will enrich you. Do all those things that you want to do. What I'm proposing is those things are not what will ultimately define your life or make you feel happiness. They're not what are going to give you a purpose because they can all come and go in and out without any fault of your own. Everything like that can be taken away from you. But rather, it's the way you live that can define your purpose because that is within your control. And no matter what happens, you're always in control of it. So whether or not we focus on big life plans, a lot of stuff is going to happen to us just as a course of living life. We're going to change jobs. Maybe we're going to have kids. We're going to start relationships. Relationships will end. Our loved ones might even unexpectedly die. And yet you'd likely have built some or all of these things along the way just by focusing on the present. This doesn't mean that you'll miss out on achieving all you might want to accomplish in life. I think that simply means that it allows us to shift the focus within to help us live with less suffering. Suffering when you're ill content with your present life situation. Suffering when you have trouble connecting with your happiness and joy. 
Suffering when you haven't built good supportive relationships that you crave. Suffering when you fail to meet someone else's definition of your success. Or suffering when society says that you're doing it all wrong. I'm not suggesting that this is an easy narrative shift. In fact, I think it's kind of challenging because we're not conditioned to think this way about our life. The Buddha said, drop by drop is the water pot filled. Likewise, the wise man, gathering it little by little, fills himself with good. And I think that really applies to to this concept. So here's another way to look at this. If I built a life path in front of me by laying down one stone each day with no plan for where the path would lead or how long it would be, then I'm allowing myself each day to make the right choice for me. And where I place the stone tomorrow will be just where it should be on that day. And where I place the stone in 10 years will be right where it should be in that day. And so on and so on. So if, however, I get too preoccupied with planning, or my focus gets caught up in what others want for me or from me, then I start to lose sight of what's actually serving me best in this moment. Do I know today what will be best for me in five years? Probably not. Can I see clearly what best serves me in my life and relationships if my focus is only on making others happy or fulfilling their vision? Probably not. So I've spoken to quite a few people about this concept recently as I wanted to understand Um, kind of a a wide spectrum of my friends and families of viewpoints on it. And I found that there's, this is a really universal struggle for people. Either that they're feeling like they're struggling with their purpose as a whole, or they're struggling with parts of it. And a really common theme I've heard is that people are happy with some parts of their lives, but not happy with other parts of lives, but that they're seeing it as a failure overall. And I don't think that's the way that we should look at it. Our goal shouldn't be to achieve 100% perfection because that's unobtainable. Instead, we might begin to feel good, feel content with the parts of our lives that are okay, while we're putting in the effort to improve the parts that we're not satisfied with. And hopefully this would allow us to achieve a greater balance. I also hear a lot of fear and a lack of trust in themselves to navigate the ups and downs and all the unknowns. So for me, that's really connected to faith. I don't have faith in a God or a higher power. Some of you may. But I know that I have faith in me, that if I'm capable of making decent decisions more days than not, not all of them, by far not all of them, but more often good than not, and faith that if I veer off my path, that I'll be able to find my way back to it. And you can't build a whole life all at once, but you could build a whole life if you just take it one day at a time. 